So welcome to your Horizons bonus episode. This is the equipment that I used and I'm gonna go through it. What is essential for camping, for being outdoors? What is essential for um, the photography aspect of it? And what could I have left home and what I thought I was really, really useful. So welcome to this a bit other video in the line of these vlog videos that are coming in the next weeks. I hope you're gonna enjoy them. They're basically showing how I did, um, how I record the photos and the video material of these different animals. And today I wanted to add up this episode because I could not record it when I was up in the mountains. I didn't have time to go over the equipment that I had with me. So. Thank you, thank you for tuning in and let's just start on this side. We have um, the backpack, Fjellreven backpack, which I normally I have a Kaika, which is really big, up to 75 kilos, but I remember the tours that I did with it and it was always a disaster. Because a trip like this is always a compromise between different parts. It's hiking, outdoor equipment, photography, yeah, trekking. There is like a trade-off that you have to do between all these different equipments. And then there's stuff like food that you need in any case. So let's start off with the essentials. And I have this Abisko uh, Freelift backpack which is 45 uh, liters big and I'm really surprised how much volume actually fits into that. I don't think, I think I overloaded it uh, in the weight department because it was making a lot of noise when I had all of it on it and I was walking made like ee, 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 the whole time, uh, too much noise, but this backpack can actually fit a lot of things. Um, this is not everything, but a lot of the equipment that I brought. And yeah, I'm impressed by that, but let's see, what do we have here? Um, some might think, okay, you went out and you want to photograph animals and you bring orange clothing and an orange backpack. First thing, some of these animals see really bad. Musk ox sees bad, arctic fox sees really bad, and reindeer. And they may be a bit better, but um, they all see kind of bad, so the color doesn't matter. I'm not even sure if they all can see color. I don't think the musk ox can. And I'm not really sure about the fox either because these animals smell more and they yeah they listen more to uh, auditorial cues so this jacket and this backpack perfectly fine this totally waterproof so I have had one jacket to protect me from wind and from rain and the positive effect with these is if anything ever happens and you get lost and you need someone to find you these colors are super standing out you're in the field, outdoors for seven days, so you're while camping for a week, something happens, you have to call someone, someone has to find you, without a call even, without location, perfect to find you. Something that is not always on you, the backpack, but this is nearly always on me, the, the rain jacket. So someone can find me in the national park without a problem if they flew, fly over with a helicopter. So that's a big pro. And then we have also these Fjellreven trousers. Uh, not really water resistant, but they dry really fast, have a lot of pockets. Um, really good. A lot of these things don't need much explanation, but some I want to take out. And um, when you're out for some days, you have to consider the amount of clothing that you take with you. And you should think about that really good so I had one set for traveling 
I had one set for sleeping and I had one set for hiking. The one for traveling was basically normal t-shirt, normal boxer shorts and then the upper department clothing like uh, trousers in, uh, and uh, jacket were the same like I would have anyhow. But then while you're hiking you have to really think about you need something that keeps you from the wind but that also lets you breathe and I'm super impressed by the Devol. Uh, it, I'm not sponsored by any of those, just to say that, but I'm really impressed by this because it breathes good, it keeps you warm, it has short uh, uh, arms and it's out of, I think it's merino wool, and after seven days this didn't really smell much. Like hiking nearly six, seven days every day in the sun for some parts the first days, three to four days in straight sun, still not really bad smell. So can only recommend that if you go out hiking, take one of those with you. And then I have one wool layer, uh, wool underpants and wool under here to keep me warm in general if it gets too cold. And this stuff doesn't really smell either, so it's really good. I have that on at the nights, if it get, because in the nights it actually got a bit cold nearly down to two degrees sometimes, four degrees, something like that. Got a bit cold. And um, this clothing, perfect for a trip like that. Then I had to think about the camp itself. And I have this Wechsel tent. It's a German brand. Um, it's not that light. It's up to two kilos itself and that's a way to carry. But then I had to consider, I could take a light tent, I don't own another tent for one person, but I could have gotten one for the sake of weight. But this one is actually super stable and I thought that I will have strong winds. I survived a sandstorm in this tent. It has like the structure of three, um, I don't know what that's called. <laughs> like the the pins you put in not pins but the structure is really stable uh, it shields you from the wind from all sides and it's flat contra point there you can't really sit upright in the tent so if it's raining for a day you get a bit frustrated but it holds keeps you safe it keeps you uh, dry and it basically protects you then I had to sleep on a mattress, uh, can't remember the brand, doesn't matter though. Um, super light, uh, it folds small as you see and it gives you way more comfort than the normal ones that are really flat and um, less space as well. And the comfort is way much better, you sleep way better. I've slept in that in New Zealand for roughly half a year and I didn't really miss a real bad to be honest. So really nice uh, sleeping comfort on these mattresses that you still uh, blow up yourself. Um, then I got a new um, sleeping bag for this trip because I wanted something that is for three seasons and Dovrefjell is supposed to be cold, it's alpine, it's, uh, it reminds a bit of the Arctic and it was supposed to be way colder but actually one night I've had a bit of a freeze in this one even. But this one goes down to zero degrees and it weighs a bit over a kilo, so super nice to have. And all, also an item I'm really glad that I took with me instead of my summer sleeping bag, I would have been freezing that one. Um, now we get a bit from the camp items more about the I have to make food, I have to get keep, keep myself clean, all these issues. Uh, hygiene issues. Um, to make food I had this little uh, pot with a... it's not really useful for a pan. I don't really like this thing, it would be better if it would be flat. But this is light and then I could easily use the volume of this to put the gas in here. And I spent a week out and how much is in here, just that you get an estimate. I needed uh, 450 grams gas to kind of survive a week, yeah, seven days hiking, yeah, one week while camping outdoors with 450 grams of gas, totally fine. 
Uh, what else other outdoor equipment was really important? Of course the stove. Easy to roll in and fold. And then you would connect it to the gas. Um, could maybe find a bit smaller one or connected one to make it a bit smaller, but I don't think weight-wise they would make much would be changing. I had a uh, like these micro towels that dry super fast. They don't dry you as good as normal towels, but they're way small. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to spare that. Just take one of those. The volume. <laughs> The volume is important. Oh, talking about clothing, I had this um, headband for if it got too cold. If you wonder why it's in the guitar, you have to watch the other video. Uh, <laughs> it basically makes noise. Um, then also for the camp and for the hiking, really good having a water, like a sack with a, a pipe to drink out of. It's two liters, which is way too big for hiking. You should always drink out of streams to make the, if you have a lot of weight on your shoulders and you know there's water, always drink while you're going. That's good to have a, um, yeah, a cup with you. And it also makes it easier from small, spray, um, small creeks to fill the big one up. So always consider just drinking out of the streams makes your backpack a bit lighter and that's really good because then you can also store a bit of water when you're having a camp at a specific place and you're coming back to that every night you can just fill that one up or you can prepare cooked water so that you're rid of the bacteria and i would totally bring that again instead of a flask or something um a bottle this is so much better uh then of course super light um cutlery and this is even more important than cutlery because this is a sharp knife, you have uh, scissors, you can clip your nails if you have to, for example. Uh, you can open a bottle of wine, no, but um, also you have all these small toys on the army knives, which you can fix your uh, Aka Swiss place with, you can fix your gear basically. So not only for food, but for everything, just super versatile. Always should have something like this with that, or a Leatherman. I never had one, but that would make the same reasonable, uh, it's super reasonable to have that with you. Um, yeah, rain covers, I had also rain trousers and rain cover for the backpack, so everything, even if, yeah, rains, it's pouring, you're prepared, no problem. Um, first aid kit, gladly I didn't need that too much, only got a small cut in the foot, um, outan. Uh, or any any insect repellent is really useful um, out in the mountains like that because there are a lot of mosquitoes you see you're gonna see in some shots and it's no fun without our town uh, without a repellent and always handy to have before I get to that yeah you should have your all this stuff uh, maybe a sanitizer for cleaning your hands for any case I also bring something to flags and I have a small package with if I'm at a cabin I can wash myself really well and uh, high factor uh, UV protection really important in the mountains especially if the clouds are gone but also when the clouds are there it just comes through. The radiation comes through. The higher you up in the mountains, the worse it gets. Just protect yourself. Always use it. Oh, we got quite far already. Um, this also super handy. I tape my feet every day I go out. I tape the back of my feet because I have problems with my shoes and I know this fixes the issue. No problem after that. But also if you have tape, you can fix stuff. You can, for example, when you have the telescope lens and it's raining and you're on a record and you have a telescope lens like I have that is not uh, completely weather sealed because the zoom just goes out, you can tape a plastic bag over here. I didn't do that, but always handy to have. In that case, is tape. everyone knows tape is always really good. Maybe this is not the most useful tape, but it does the job most of it. Um, 
So this is basically, this half is basically essentials. Uh, what you need for the camp, what you need to stay fresh, what you need to wash yourself, uh, to make food. And yeah, that's one part of the compromise. I tried to keep that down, but it's I used all of these things to the max of them. And I wouldn't have let, left anything of these whole at home. Would have brought all of those. Yeah, the photo equipment is really where the compromises start a lot. Um, actually not that many compromises because before I did this trip I said I'm not gonna bring two cameras, I wanna f I'm gonna vlog myself with the mobile phone, but then I got scared that I maybe don't have enough space on the mobile phone to do that. I was really wrong about that, I would have enough space, but in the end it was easier to fix the cameras on the tripod to film myself. Uh, so there... I don't know. I'm kind of glad that I brought the second camera because it's also good to have a crop sensor to have the range better of your lenses that you have with you, so no bad feelings there, but it would have nearly saved me a kilo to leave one of the cameras at home. Because the mobile you bring, in any case, then I was glad that I brought the camera, the video microphone, Pro Plus, whatever, because I don't have a dead cat for this small microphone and that was my main plan. So good that I brought that because without the dead cat I would have been lost. There was just too much wind noise going through. Would have been horrible, would have been horrible for you. I would have to basically do everything again. So good that I brought this stuff. And then I brought the 24 to 70 which is right now filming me. And I brought the telescope lens. So the good thing about this combination is I can do le uh, wildlife photography. I have a versatile, uh, versatile lens here with a long zoom. I can eventually do a landscape telescopic landscape photo photos with this one. And I can do normal landscape with a 24 to 70. Good range there. Maybe 24 to 105 is it? Or 120 is available. That could have been the even better choice um, to do this trip, but I don't own that, so these together, good um, good range. And then I could also combine the 24 to 70 with the crop sensor and basically get uh, 36 to 105 out of it. So I nearly had all of the range covered somehow, uh, which was basically my plan with bringing the crop sensor lens and yeah, basically having the same lens with the same settings to record myself. And that's why I chose those, those two lenses. Then I had something to clean my sensor to push, uh, to push dust out. And I also brought some more equipment because yeah, you think like, if I do a trip like this and I bring all this stuff, what happens if I get dust on my sensor? So then everything is not worth it. So I had some extra batteries in here. I had another uh, gear to kind of um, work my Arca Swiss or my tripod. Um, lens pen should be always in your bag. Extra batteries, extra SD cards. Didn't feel fill that much gigabytes though. And uh, filters. I used them literally once, but. That was due to the strong sun. I think I would have used it more if I had some other opportunities. Uh, polarizer and a 10 stop ND and something to clean the sensor because yeah, I'm not taking this risk going out there and then messing up my gear. So sorry for that noise. Something you should bring and pack it together because it will be annoying if everything is just flying around. Then I had a solar cell with me and you can open this one. Um, it opens up to three solar panels. You can set them in the sun and then you get two uh, USB outlets. I could charge my phone with it, I could charge the microphone with it, I can charge the batteries with it. Uh, super useful, especially the first three to four days when the sun was super strong. I set it everywhere, I put it on my backpack while I was walking from the sun and then I could charge my batteries. I had a power bank that I charged over the day so I could also charge at night. 
perfectly safe. Maybe the power bank was a bit too much, but you don't want that risk in the, if you're in the case in the situation that I was in. Then eventually I wasn't sure if I stay on the campsite or on a, in a cabin, I could charge with the normal uh, connection, which this one has uh, outlets for USB and not. So this is really versatile equipment. So glad that I got it and that I brought it. A uh, really useful item is this here because it just it saves you from water from below. You can sit on it, it's light, doesn't take much space, perfectly fine. So these equipment really necessary. Uh, couldn't do it without it. Uh, before we get to the really pros and cons, food. And I don't, no, I don't have all the food here. I just have some example food, like I had for breakfast, I had some muesli, and for during the day, I had some muesli bars. Um, that's what I kind of lift from the first half of the morning, first half of the day, and then later, I had um, I had some tortillas that I would uh, put a mix of peanut butter, <laughs> peanut, butter, peanut butter and jelly on. I mixed that prehand, so I had one plastic container with the uh, peanut butter jelly. Keeps it together, it looks super disgusting, tastes really good. And you have just one container, put it into another Ziploc bag because it will leak. Everything in Ziploc bags what it has to do with food. And then you can ration it for the days. Uh, if you eat it all, I didn't eat it all directly because of the sun. I, I'm, I'm not getting hungry. I just think like there's energy pumped in me all the time. So muesli in the morning, really good for a long hiking trip, seven days outdoors. Muesli in the morning and then later I had some nut mix also in, um, in the Ziploc bag. I put in like almonds and hazelnut, uh, jalapeno spiced peanuts to f yeah, spice it a bit up. You need some taste when you're out there, it lifts your spirits. And then I also put in some uh, um, some <laughs> some corn, uh, not popcorn, but uh, fried corn. Really good mix. I uh, would totally recommend that and do it again if you're not allergic to peanuts. Mm, that was like my snack uh, apartment department and I also had some chocolate after I had to fill up my um, resources a bit. Chocolate also keeps the spirits high really good and then in the evenings I tried some single day you mix hot water with stuff and cheese noodles and that was okay but not my favorite. The two month that I had with me like the real camping food, what do they call it, camp, camp food um, that really fills up because it's it's good on one hand because it's super light because it's uh, dry freezed and then after it's dry it's dry freezed you just have to put water in hot water in and then it becomes really big and you feel so so full after it i could sometimes not eat the whole portions i felt filled up i felt good i could sleep without being hungry and that was basically my food for the evenings. So muesli in the morning, some snacks over the days, a peanut butter and jelly, and yeah, two months. And that kept me fat really good. And over the whole seven days while I was out there and filming. What was the big downside in this equipment? Um, Will upside the new sleeping bag, love it really good the light um, back the backpack that takes so much and so glad about the merino wool shirt with the short arms uh, no smell at all okay that's a bit over the top but not much smell after seven days outdoors not much smell on the shirt and yeah water bag all super useful my great mistake this doesn't weigh too much, but it's a few hundred grams, and it's the camouflage. I only brought the upper part because I thought my trousers are in the right color. This I could have left at home, because, uh, as I said, 
these animals, musk ox, arctic fox, wild reindeer, they don't see good. And most of them, like the musk ox, I want them to see me so that they're warned, so... Yeah. Could have left that at home, could have spared those few hundred grams. And then I made a big, even bigger mistake leaving this one here at home, because I thought, yes, this filter weights a few hundred grams, and I could spare something here, because I was like, oh, where, where do I take weight out of here? What can I leave at home? And I decided for the Rario ND filter. And this is a really good quality filter, and what I had a real big problem with while I was out there, I had to film everything with a really closed aperture, so f14 to 22 depending on the frame rate with the 24 to 70. With this I could have made it darker, could have made it more cinematic when I film myself. I was really missing this filter on the first day already, or the second day. I realized my big mistake and I can only recommend bring one of those if you do kind of the same thing like this. Don't compromise the ND filter. The Vario ND. Super useful. Maybe leave the camouflage at home for that. But that's basically it. I hope this helps you planning a trip like seven days out in the wild. Um, wild camping in general and combining it with photography. Maybe focus on only doing landscape or or wildlife photography but since I was vlogging with this camera it made sense to have the other lens as well yeah, I hope this helped you a bit I hope you had uh, my ideas about food help you a bit they're not optimal if you have any recommendations on other like morning food or something I really like would like to hear about that because that's my biggest issue that I'm working on, like food, what, what is best to be outside, what really fills you up, what is light, what's the best calories per uh, weight. So uh, I'd like to hear about that. Smash like, uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We are at 100 subscribers now, thank you for that. And uh, watch some of the videos that come out the next weeks about Horizons. I hope you enjoy the documentary and I see you soon. And I'll talk to you soon.